they have to sort of be taught not to know that. They have to be taken out of alignment. My theory is that children come into this world very aligned, highly sensitive, very in tune with their gifts. And in many cases, our education system does a disservice and pulls them out of this. One of the things I want to say that I've seen over and over again is that it might be that most students are ready at seven to take lessons. I can't say if it's truly because well, let me back up. This is something that I pointed out last week, but I'll repeat really fast is that from my experience, every child is ready by seven. Before seven, it's a variable. Some are, are ready by five. Some are not even close to being ready. Below five, even some are ready. But even then, I still recommend group lessons because I think that children enjoy the group lessons more. But it, I've seen successful lessons given to four-year-olds, the question that I don't know is by the time they're 20, 30, are they still playing, right? Whereas my goal has always been to instill a love of music that will last with them for a lifetime so that that gift is with them for a lifetime so that all the work they put in as a child, they get to profit from when they're older. Because the biggest shame to me is when I meet adults and they've been trained, some of them through Juilliard, up through college, and they don't touch their instrument at that point. But what's even more of a shame is that I see many, many students starting around the age of seven on start to lose their creativity. As I mentioned, many students like to still make up songs at seven, nine, but once they hit that preteen stage and on, then it starts to become more rare that a student is still willing to make up a song, right? Now, is that because this there's they're honing more in on their natural talents and some people are songwriters and some aren't or is it because their creativity is starting to you know I don't know what the proper word would be like crowded out by the logic it's being ignored it's being underdeveloped it's being discouraged something's happening and this is part of my biggest problem with the education system is that it isn't helping students to not only is it not helping it really feels like it, it's going the other way when it comes to creativity. Um, it feels like it's droning it out and it's developing the logic. In some cases, many people would say it's not even developing that that well anymore as many um, schools have just fallen off the deep end. We don't do classics anymore. Um, you know, there's that's a debate for a different it's not even really a debate I wouldn't say I think we all know at least in America the level of education has gone down tremendously so what are they teaching our students because one thing I'm, I'm going to be certain about they are not helping them develop their creativity so I that's when I want to bring in another quote that I have here and let me see if it looks like I've ah here it is okay Carolyn Miss if you don't know her she excuse me let me take a little sip of water before I read this. Okay, Carolyn Miss is a medical intuitive. She was an editor, I think, and she really didn't want to be a creative, in, I mean, a medical intuitive. If you don't know that, what that is, it's basically like a psychic, but with medical things in particular. She studied the human body and she was able to, you know, go in and really... Um, hone in on people's diseases and I came across her many years ago because of her writings which I always found very helpful but it's been over a decade really since I've listened to her so I don't know where she's at these days and once again any body anybody I'm quoting any resources I'm bringing up here it's only for the sake of discussion and it's by no means saying that my entire thought system is lined up or my entire moral system is lined up with these with this person so when I read this quote, think of that from that direction, but I do love this quote. So this is Carolyn Miss's quote. The journey of life is only about us becoming comfortable with the creative force of our soul. So let me read that again. The journey of life is only about us becoming comfortable with the creative force of our soul, the creative force of what we are, of how creative every word we say is, every thought we have, the force of our power. This is why I'm so focused on helping students to never lose touch with their creative force and why I'm so impassioned to help adults 
to reconnect with their creative force because I believe it's central to who we are as human beings. And with the rise of AI, I find that only to be more so. If we're going to contribute to society with AI coming in the way it is, that is the one thing we can do over AI, our creative force. And so many of us have been talked out of it and have become cogs in a wheel and we don't know how to get back to it. So music lessons, art lessons, crafts, sports even, So many activities that are considered extracurricular are actually essential for the development of a child because they, we live in a different world and I've seen it happen. There are many, many, many of these youngins coming in, even up to in their twenties that have not had their creativity shut down. They are not blocked from it. They never were. Somehow they made it through, even with this education being the way it is, either by their parents or maybe because they did have a teacher in that system that fostered it, or maybe because of all the extra movements that have been happening in the educational system, probably a lot of them were homeschooled. Many, many reasons I've seen these students never get shut down. Whereas the work I've had to do as an adult and the work of many of the parents that I'm probably speaking with, we've had to learn how to open ourselves back up to it. I have a wonderful, wonderful student right now who I taught many years ago before she had a child. And now that she's had a child has just opened her up just from being around this child right? Just from being around children, they can reconnect us with our creativity. And that creative force is important. Somehow society has talked us out of that and made it like this is frou-frou, right? This is just, we've got to come, everything is five senses. Everything's got to come from our logic. Everything's got to be science. And the arts and creativity and imagination and I would even tie it up with the spiritual all these things that are maybe vibrating at a different vibration from this logic or this sort of denser 3d reality is it the message I got was that it was frivolous it was a waste of time it wasn't important but it is important it's very 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 important One of the things that's very important is to a sense of well-being and to uncovering who you are in this life and the power that you have to create it, right? This gets into the spiritual sciences. This gets into the secret, you know, which all of that is, you know, excuse my language, but bastardized, you know, sort of dumbed down versions of something that I do think is essentially true, that we are creative beings at our deep level. And somehow we are co-creating reality. I don't entirely understand it, but our imagination is key to that. Our thoughts are key to that. Our words are key to that. And so many of us are just not able to Um, You know, we have runaway minds, we have minds that are overly busy, filled with thoughts that probably aren't even ours, right? Um, And we don't, we've lost that power. So music as a metaphor is reclaiming that. And by using an instrument, or using the power of your voice, you are connecting it and grounding it in with the 3D. And this is One of the reasons why music lessons is just so important for students and for children and why while a student is taking, I recommend that the the, uh, parent takes them as well because it's great for the parents as well. And it is what I say is it's a decision that you just never regret. You just don't. Even students that have taken time in music lessons, um, Some of them do have a sense of failure from it. Some of them do have a sense of, I wasn't good. But very few of them, I think, would ever um, be sad that they learned how to play an instrument, that they knew how to play an instrument, right? It's truly something that brings people joy, a sense of accomplishment. It helps them in their identity. There's a book that I had read a long time ago called Reviving Ophelia, And it was a lot about this idea that especially for girls in their like 10, 11, 12, that junior high age, 
having an instrument or having a sport or having some sort of activity, creative expression can really help them to make it through that time period with their self-image intact. Because I can speak personally, that's such a scary time period. And if you don't have a strong sense of who you are at that point, that is one of the places you can get so off track with yourself. I know personally how that can be. And then you can end up spending so much of your adult adult life trying to rediscover that person that you let go of during that time period. So these, these music, these um, music lessons can help to anchor girls. And I'm speaking specifically about girls because I'm a woman, but I do think that it's true for, for boys as well. And I don't mean to neglect boys because I think they have been neglected in many ways. And I think they need this attention. And in many cases with music lessons, you see over and over again that in fact, up to a certain age, not in all cases, but in a lot of cases, students do better with their same sex, right? So guys with guys and girls with girls. And this maybe goes to a mentorship. This goes to a comfortability, especially in that sort of time period there of 10, 11, 12, 13. It's a very tricky time for both boys and girls. And having a music teacher that can be a role model for them, having one of the same sex can help them to feel more comfortable, can help to supplement the parents during that time period. So I can't believe it. I've been talking for a long time and I really haven't even gotten to a lot of my notes on this. So I'm going to talk more about this. I really didn't get into the nuts and bolts advice that I would like to to do. I'm basically just giving you everything, all of my, um, everything I have to offer on this subject. And I'm just letting, I'm doing it it's sort of in an improvised way, even though I had planned out some things to say, I'm just sort of let the spirit take over here and kind of just went with it. Um, but I'm going to look at my notes really fast as we're closing out just this last five minutes or so um, and see, it looks like I actually did hit a lot of my points. Music, art, sports, writing. The important part, I'm going to differentiate. The important part here is that as a parent that you are seeking teachers that are looking to balance the discipline with the imagination and the creativity, right? And there are teachers out there. I'm one of them and I have seen a fair number. Now, is it everybody? No, definitely not. And the things you want to stay away from is when it starts to become cookie cutter formula type of things. And that's what I think happens in school. Writing is taught in school. Art is taught in school. But because it's so hard to deal with that number of students and because of the way the educational system has started to just be need to be quantified, it's become formulaic. And so you have formulas for writing, right? Or if you're doing art, you sort of have the art paint by numbers type of stuff. That's better than nothing. And I know it's fun for those children, but it's not the same as really developing um, a drawing skill, you know, learning to draw from scratch or really understanding how music works and learning how to read music. It's because it's such a full body experience. I was talking to a student about this the other day. You know, it's the dexterity in your hands. It's the volume that you're playing. It's using your ears. Um, it's in your brain having to pay attention to the sound whilst you're paying attention to um, the notes on the page whilst you're then trying on top of that to layer in expression right? Expressing something, bringing in the emotional body, bringing in the idea of expressing beauty, not just playing these notes, right? All of that starts to bring your full being online. And that's the type of experience that we want, right? We want to, to not just have our, our children um, fragmented into parts. And whether at school, this part gets to function, but we have to shut down all this other stuff. It's like, no, letting the child operate with all of these senses having to function at the same time. It can be very difficult at first, but it because it's a human skill and a human nature, when you lead the child very quickly, it's second nature and it's easy. It's also um, uniting the right and the left hemisphere when we're using the logic needed to play music, right? And the structure um, with the right side that is sensing patterns and expressing emotion or ideas. So it's uniting the brain in a way. So that's one of the things that's one of the biggest um, 
you know, benefits to playing music, especially when they're young. It's wiring the brain to know how to use both hemispheres at the same time. When there's been so many studies that, you know, the um, left brain is dominant, right? And that many, many people are sort of shutting down or not using that right brain creativity. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I'll just stop with a, a big victory for me that happened in this last week is that two students, um, two people have come to me and expressed that I helped them to pick up an instrument later in life. They were people who had played when they were young. They had played in churches. They, it was okay. It wasn't something that they identified as like, I want to be a pianist in life, right? But they played it and they were at a decent level. And back then there was more of that, right? Back then people had to have the children play at churches more. There was more opportunities where children had to become at least functional in music. And these women did that. But once they became in their 20s, they didn't touch it. And then lo and behold, they start to hit retirement age around 70 and they pick up their instrument again. And the most interesting part about it is that it takes somewhere between two months, two to six months, but it, it comes back. I mean, just like they say, just like riding a bike, all of that work that they did is in there. It doesn't come back the minute they sit down and touch the, the piano, but it comes back with the repetition of daily practice for a certain amount of time. Bam, it's back. And they both are enjoying it so much. And it's been so wonderful because this is my mission in life to not only continue to develop my talent as a musician just because it helps me to feel more of who I am and, and it doesn't matter if I ever seek I mean reach any sort of notoriety for it any sort of career where I'm making a lot of money from it that's not the goal the goal is to play because it's part of who I am and to inspire other people to do the same so that we can live more holistically as our whole identity, not fragmented, not parts of us, not allowing certain parts of us to be out in the world and pushing and suppressing other parts of us, but actually being healthy, whole people. And in that, pursuing music, pursuing your creativity, maybe it's not music, okay, but your creativity, bringing your creativity online is important to that. That's the message for today. I will have to wrap it up here. Um, but I will say that I'm going to speak more on this. I love talking about this and I love, I'm going to figure out a way to share this because so often I'm talking one-to-one -to, -one, um, to parents about this, but I'd like to get my information out. And once again, if it's not helpful for you, if it doesn't resonate with you, if you're coming from a different direction, no problem. I am not saying that this is should be forced on anybody, but I'm sharing in a spirit of if this helps you, please go forth with it. Right. I want to share the time that I had in the trenches, the things that I learned um, in a professional way with people, um, because this is my passion. This is my professional passion, always with the sense of saying, actually, I my hat's off to parents, because at the end of the day, as a music teacher, I can say adios <laughs> and go home and do my thing and home, play my piano, do my thing. It is so different for the parents. So I love being here to help you in whatever way I can. Never in a spirit of judgment because I do not know what it's like to raise a child. I don't. But more to just say that we see you. We're so thankful for those parents that are out there doing everything they can for their children. And I just want to say God bless you. And if, if possible, if at all possible, see about bringing in some music to you and your children's life and I hope it helps.